welcome to the show. I'm Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Club. Wait, Norman, why are you looking at me like that? I'm not Silver, I'm Tortera. Wait, why do I have claws? Why do I have a horse's butt? Oh my god, I'm in Silver's body! Well, that's interesting to know. And also joining us today is Tortera. Why do I feel this sudden need to curl into a ball and or go into a fierce battle? Also, I want to eat the grass. This is weird. Uh, I do not you'll understand. Be, you'll be used to it. Why do I want, I want to be captured by a blue ball? <laughs> I mean, hey, now I got two great balls. <laughs> oh, now you'll see how it feels. I beg your pardon. I'll have you know that I've been attacked by many things. That is true. Well, um, th- th- that's a pretty confusing start, but <laughs> good thing I caught on. <laughs> Well, anywho, um, yeah, I, I don't think I really introduced the show. Yeah, this is the review and discussion podcast. Uh, we have me, Silver Quill, and Torterra. We do reviews and stuff, so yay. So, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 18, She Talks to Angels. So, in this episode, when Suttershine and Angel's relationship hits the skid, skids? Huh, okay. Sakura gives them a potion to help them understand each other better. Alrighty then. So, uh, let's see. Silver, what... Uh, first impressions are in order, but... Silver, what do you think, man? Are we talking Silver and Torterra's body or Torterra and Silver's body? I don't know. If you want to keep on with the gimmick, go ahead, man. <laughs> yeah, because, this, you know, you gotta be very specific, Norman. <laughs> yeah, don't, bo- don't body shame us. <laughs> I mean, I may finally have wings. I might enjoy this body, but I kind of miss my old body. I I do enjoy this shade that this built-in tree provides. It's quite nice. Mm. Hey, it comes with free shade. <laughs> don't throw shade, man. I, yeah, no longer have to throw it at people. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. Do you see what the game the game like? I don't know, man. It's going to be confusing. Okay, fine. We won't confuse him, but I'll I'll be silver again. <laughs> and yeah. I'll be Torterra again. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I gotta say, I enjoyed this episode mostly because it's it sort of covers a dynamic that's been in place since the show began. Uh, Fluttershy and Angel, except, oh, how Fluttershy has grown. She's changed from being this depend dependent or uh, needy towards Angel, and now she's asserting her own growth. Honestly, I, while I, I get that Fluttershy learns a lesson, I feel like this is really an Angel episode uh, learning, and with Fluttershy as a supporting character. It's Angel learning to be a bit less selfish, a bit more mature, and much more empathetic. So it's uh, enjoyable. There are several issues I have that we'll talk to in due time, but I had fun with this. All right. And uh, Tara, uh, what do you have to say, man? I, I really like this episode too. I mean, when I first saw it, at first I had like mixed opinions. I found it a bit decent. Like I, I kind of disliked it, but I liked it at the same time. But then as I went through it again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It had uh, some good comedy a bit there, and it had a good lesson. I like how uh, they addressed some issues, but there are some problems that, or there are some points in the episode I had a problem with too. But we'll go into that later. All right, and as for me. This episode was a lot of fun. Uh, one of the few things that grind my gears is Angel. <sighs> Angel. Do I need to say more? No. Mm-hmm. No. But at least uh, we uh, we have a voice for Angel. We get to hear how Angel is. And eh, it, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I'll say this before we start. I... I did wish that we had the scenario where uh, Fluttershy, no, sorry, in, where Angel is in Fluttershy's body, uh, he has a man's voice. I, I was hoping for that, like those kind of idiosity. Like, remember? I, I was kind of expecting that to be honest when I first saw the episode. <laughs> I think I think you mean idiosyncrasy. No idiosity. Let's see here. That's not so much like an insult to me. Idiosity. <laughs> Idiosity is an urban dictionary definition. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, first two people are, are afflicted. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't actually... Def- Come on, give me the definition. <laughs> no, long story short, remember back in the days when we have 
shows that do body swaps. Well, I don't know much about shows, but I know that there's some movies that do that. In certain shows, I think Silver can back me up on this. If character A goes into character B's body, they still retain their voice but change bodies. Remember those kind of shows, Silver? Oh, yes. Yeah, so to me, that's just dumb. But why I want it in Pony? Because we never had a voice for Angel. So to hear how he sounds like would be interesting. Uh, I do hope they go for the Vincent Tong voice that he did in the comics. Remember that one when he read at the panel? I don't think I was there for that. I, really? I thought you... Yeah. But it's one of those things. But nah, that's, we didn't get that. We didn't get that. But anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this episode, pause here and go watch it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the comics. Sorry, episode. <laughs> uh, I'm confusing all my thing. But anywho, let's, pop, let's hop right into it. So we start off the episode with our hero, Fluttershy, counseling the animals. Long story short, the... Uh, herbivores are not happy with the carnivores because the carnivores want to eat the herbivores and blah 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 and now they have to kind of get along and Fluttershy is the intermediate and tries to smooth things with them while Angel Bunny is being a jerk yes um, I'm gonna pause here because that summarizes the whole thing so Silver what do you think? Oh, well, first thing, we need to address the elephant in the room. And yeah. no, I'm not talking about the ba- the baby elephant. Uh, a lot of people were upset by this opening. And there's a real world reason why. Mm-hmm. Turns out, and this sounds utterly ridiculous in my eyes and ears, vegan pet owners are forcing their animals to adopt a vegan diet. Okay, a vegan diet is debatable e- amongst humans on a good day. Amongst animals, it's actually very harmful. They're not meant to adopt a, a, di- a diet outside of what they were, to which they've adapted. So, you know, you can't force your dog to never eat meat. And so when, when Fluttershy is presenting this to a bunch of animals, this set off a lot of people because it's a very real world issue. In truth, I wasn't aware of it when I first watched. Huh. I don't hold the show to that level of realism mostly because of one event that happens later on in the episode. So I, I, how to put this, if this show was really about animal care, I'd have a greater issue with this. But more, it's a bit of real world fact. You cannot force your animal into a diet that only, that you like. But at the same time within the show, it's not a deal breaker for me. Yeah, but at the same time too, the caveat is that while you're in the sanctuary, you follow my rules. So if you don't like it, you can leave the sanctuary. So it's not something that is forced down their throats. (laughs) Uh, Pun intended. I do empathize with the herbivores. If I was on the dinner menu for someone, I think I would feel a personal stake in this discussion. I'd want to have a voice. Mm, True, 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 true. And all the animals there are in the sanctuary to relax and not be afraid of getting eaten. The sanctuary is a safe place. So... Certain rules are set, and in this scenario here, carnivores have to play nice. Well, they do, and and they still have to eat. But one thing I've always been impressed by is that Fluttershy, uh, we saw back in uh, Dragon Shy, that she will feed worms to birds, fish to otters. She's not against the circle of life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I can't sing. Uh, on top of that, in the comics, she noticed uh, the surgical, the, the, uh, fascinating. Uh, sorry, what did she say, Silva? Uh, nature. Oh, nature is so, so fascinating. Yeah. While there's the, this brutal d- battle for dominance that's making the main six puke. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> yeah. That actually happens. Yep. <laughs> that was that was an issue one three oh, three. Wow. It has become a meme of in its own right. <laughs> Yeah, so Fluttershy is all okay, but in the Sanctuary, everybody's here to relax. Oh, you haven't talked about Angel. Well, Angel is being very much a petulant child in this, causing trouble for attention. 
and also to asserting dominance that he is Fluttershy's favorite. But her role in the in this world in this show has expanded beyond just caring for him. And he he can't accept that, <laughs> which is very disappointing, but totally in keeping with Angel. All right, all right. And Tara, what do you think? Well, I mean, I don't know the whole thing about uh, vegan food stuff, but I did. I well, I did hear about it, but I didn't really go much into it or learn much about it. Because I know someone, one of my friends, surprisingly enough, their dog is allergic to meat. What? So, yeah, I don't know why. But the dog just can't have meat because then it starts feeling sick. Okay. Aw. But how does he get the protein then? Keep yeah, he, he gets other types of proteins, just not meat. So, wait, when you say meat, that is in red meat or meat in general? I, th- I think it's just meat in general. So, no chicken? Nope. Hmm, okay. But other than that, I mean, it's just the usual stuff. Fluttershy is being kind and talk, talk about the group circle. Although it kind of reminds me a bit of Zootopia. Prayers and Prey get along and sing Kumbaya, you know. <laughs> and then Angel's just doing his usual shtick, where it's being a jerk, pulling on the elephant's tail, pulling on um, the bear's ear, and then w- step on the wolf's tail. And, you know, I wish that the episode would just end after the wolf... Like you basically, the wolf goes down on Angel. You hear the chomp sound. And you think they roll credits right there, but no, Angel's just covered in slobber. <laughs> oh, that would be a perfect ending. <laughs> exactly. Of course, we need to cover Fluttershy's mental trauma and grieving process thereafter. Oh, she, she'll get over it. I mean, Discord's there. Yeah, Discord could just snap his fingers and he'll be back. Well, oh, come on, he's got to pass on his genes to the next generation of evil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he did. So anyway, um, I'm going to continue on. All right. So after this kerfuffle with Angel Bunny, um, we see Zakura and who now? Dr. Fauna. Oh, she's, it's been a while since she's been around. Uh, walk up to the sanctuary because Zakura here has a, I would say pet, but she found a creature and it's a gecko. Somehow... The gecko is coughing up smoke. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. I think he should quit on smoking. He's he's coughing before trying to convince everyone to switch to Geico. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Zakura noticed that Fluttershy and Angel Bunny's relationship is a bit on the rocks and says to them, Yo, if you need some counseling or anything, come to my hut. I got the perfect medicine for you guys. Fluttershy just says, ah, it's cool, it's cool. And Dr. Fauna just mentions that, yo, Fluttershy, your list is stupid long. How do you do this every day? And Fluttershy just mentions, we have a lot of patience. And yeah, like Silver mentioned, Fluttershy, uh, Angel Bunny is just being a passionate child, wanting some attention, but not getting any. And we get to see the setup here. So the Python here wants to eat the baby elephant but Fluttershy bribes the python with cookie uh, what was it yeah called? vegan cookies no no not vegan Um, I think she called it um snake treats something like that they're shaped like cookies no it's it's uh it is vegan really they're snake treats made to look like chocolate chip cookies they're vegan I think he probably made a whole jar of them oh huh. all right then so Pinky knows how to bake vegan cookies. I am so disappointed in her. Hmm. Alrighty, I, I I guess I missed that part. Huh. Well, so we go through the whole list. Um, it's just that Fluttershy uh, makes a deal with the snake. The snake has a jar of cookies and then goes to the giraffe. The giraffe has a massage. Fluttershy reminds the Flamingo to shift his weight and so on. Yeah, and this, this goes through the whole thing. And in the end, Fluttershy and Angel Bunny have an argument and they decide that, okay, we need the help from Sakura. And they go to her hut. Once in the hut, Sakura whips them up a concoction that she tells them to take at the same time while at home. So I'm going to pause here for a bit. So Tara, what do you think, man? 
Not really much to say. I mean, it's just basically a montage of Fluttershy taking care of all these different types of animals and Angel always asking for attention. But Fluttershy is like, nope, I have a very busy schedule. I'm sorry I can't be with you. And Angel's like, no, I must get all the attention. I want to have special treats too, like the snake. I want to get my belly rub, just like how the giraffe got its neck rubbed and all that stuff. I do like, though, how during all this, because I remember back in the old seasons when they'd be holding a piece of paper or something like that, they would just use their hooves. But now we see Fluttershy holding the the list with her wings. And even when she tells Angel, like, no, I got some stuff to do, she uses her wings and she even points at the paper with her wings. We're like, that's that's pretty clever. We don't see a lot of that. <laughs> True that, true that. Um, I guess the enemy does know what to do now. <laughs> yeah, because usually you think people, like, it's just, oh, yeah, it's just wings. They can just fly around and stuff like that. But now they show that, you know, you could use your wings to hold up a list and you can, like, multitask with them, be, use hand gestures with your wings. You could even literally give someone the bird with those wings if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you can use the double twos. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, boys. Uh, and what about the Sakura part? I actually like too how she, Zakura, I love how Zakora has that smile. She's like, "Yes, I, I knew you were about to come soon. That's why I have this pot ready," and just you know, the usual self where she tries to her best to help and her rhyming, which I can never top her rhyming because I'm terrible at rhyming. I mean, I mean, if we look back to the moment where Silver Coral's cheerleading, I couldn't even top that. <laughs> uh, Silver, what about you, man? Well, I like rhyming. I, I as long as I don't bring up the word orange, I'm golden. <laughs> oh, but about the issue. Lots of things to cover. First off, I do I too enjoy how Fluttershy utilizes her wings as as appendages or hands. I especially love when she holds up a wing like a hand to Angel, saying, "Tuck to the wing, <laughs> tuck to the wing," because the face don't want to hear you. Vegan cookies. I've already voiced my displeasure on that. Make you genuine chocolate chips. How could you? Chocolate chips are my favorite. It's right. In fact, in a role-playing uh, game last week, I was, my character was offered cookies, and first thing I did, roll perception to see if they're chocolate chip <laughs> or raisins. <laughs> so how long do you roll, man? I rolled that they were not raisin. Well, that's good. There's nothing wrong with raisin cookies. Except that they're not chocolate chip. I mean, that is a typical trap. I remember back when I when I was very young, and I thought the raisins were chocolate chips. I'm like, yeah, I'll take a bite of it. I like chocolate chip. I take a bite, I'm like, what is this? I'm like, raisins, like, ah! <laughs> but raisins are that bad. <laughs> you lied to me. The first bite is with the eyes, Norman. With the eyes. Anyway, now, speaking of consumables, Angel sets up that he wants the essence of carrot, which Fluttershy uh, very firmly says no. And it's kind of gratifying to see Fluttershy giving him the business of no being assertive she's not capitulating like she did back in putting your hoof down that was uh wonderful in my eyes but i also appreciate that it's angel who admits that he doesn't like fighting first and foremost even more than fluttershy it shows that underneath there is a care for fluttershy now back to the cookies because it's how uh what what's the snake's name again there's Muriel, the elephant, and Antoine, the snake. Well, Antoine takes a bite of a cookie. Now, I have seen snakes eat, recently, in fact. I don't believe it's within their power to take a bite of a cookie. They're not a species designed to take a bite. So, at this point, you have two choices. You could either complain that this show does not get animal biology, which is fair. It's a valid point. Or you can let go of the need for accurate biology and just accept, okay, this is a fun cartoonish premise. I'm going with the latter. <laughs> well, I mean, we're talking about a show where they have colorful po ponies eating like cakes and chocolate and all that other uh, stuff. Yeah. Tara? Yeah, it's kind of... Guys, guys. Hmm. I'm going to say this. We, we have a show where there's a pegasi holding paper with her wings like a hen. And there's a Pegasus in the show, for God's sake. It could happen someday. Give us enough mutation. <laughs> True. I mean, we already had a giant turtle. I mean, tortoise. Giant tortoise do exist. Yeah, yeah and everyone. they made him eat garbage. You do like chocolate chips. It's not good for the diet. And yet, raisins are worse. Yes. I'm going to prove you guys and say they're not that bad. How can you prove prove that to us when we re reject your raisins? <laughs> I'm going to buy chocolate chip. No, I'm going to buy 
cookie raisins. I'm gonna taste them and say they're not bad. Okay. Now what he's gonna yeah. do is he's is he's gonna put a mixture of chocolate chip and raisins that look like chocolate chip. He's gonna put them in a box and he's gonna ship them to you. <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna do that because the shipping for food is questionable, especially cookies. I, I got no idea how long they last. <laughs> Plus, I just get a fork and poke at them to confirm. <laughs> a study confirms that this is raisins. Norman, how could you? <laughs> oh my God. You just became an international incident, sonny boy. <laughs> oh, what? I didn't think it oh, Silver, is that all? Well, we haven't really, really gotten to Zakura yet. I mean, she's offered to help, but you know the kind of help Zakura offers these days. Yep. They're, they're not, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to troll her or declare her a troller. <laughs> uh, something fierce. So, moving ever onwards. All righty then. So, anywho, with, uh, uh, with that, after the visit to Zakura's hut, Satishai and Angel Bunny walks home. But Angel wants to have, you know, a nice time with Satishai and points at Bonbon bon and Lyra having a picnic outside their house, I'm assuming. Guess, don't know, but they're having a picnic. And Satishai says, oh, we haven't done that in a long time. That'll be very nice. Then... She starts to worry about the animals at the sanctuary. And with that, Angel is just peeved and decides to take the potion now. And Fatashai, well, Sakura says they have to, so she does. And with that, they swap bodies. Oh my god. Who would have thought this would happen? Oh no. Both of them panic for a while. And goes to the fountain to look at the reflection. And Angel Bunny or yeah, Angel Bunny here is really having a good time because he can speak. He can speak, he can speak, he can sing Where's that one from? Uh that's from Simpsons, the musical of uh Planet of the Apes. <laughs> uh alright then. So so this shy Stops Angel from embarrassing herself and gives Angel the stare. And Angel complains that, what, you're giving the stare and it's working? Ah, God, that, that, that sucks. So, Satishai just tells Angel, go back to the sanctuary, do my chores, and while I'll go to Zakura and fix this. And so they do. Satishai goes to the sanctuary and, well, she's... I am not going to get used to this. Angel just being a spoiled sport because he just wants to do get this over with because he wants to just do whatever he can because he can speak. And Dr. Fauna just says like, oh wow, Fleshy, glad you're around. Um, uh, what's up? And stuff. And Angel being, well, kind of in a tizzy, just... Says that, oh yeah, I, I am rather shy. I talk to the animals and I want to marry Discord. And I have to pause here. What? Like, what? Oh, people pounced on that line so fast. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I, when I first heard that, I was like, what? Uh, okay, um, let me continue on for a bit. So in just a bit, sorry, yeah, I just gotta continue for a bit just to finish the thought. So, Angel goes around terrorizing the people or the animals because he wants revenge. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna pause here because what? So, well, what can I say? One, I got, I gotta say, I love how Andrea Libman does Angel's voice. Quote, quote. Mm -hmm. uh, just hearing her in this sort of dismissive bratty uh i'm i'm too cool for you man we know that she has the range ever since what what episode was that again oh, oh many episodes many 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 episodes uh, the one where she had three personalities oh take it till you make it yeah like we know we knew that she has the range for it and 
Well, she is a voice actress. She did many projects before this. But I'm guessing that we, we're we hearing another cadence of Fluttershy. Cadence isn't in this episode. Norman, get, get your facts straight. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. <laughs> just like uh, how you well. stick with your raisins to chocolate chip. I'm yeah. just saying they're not that bad. <laughs> You're sick. <laughs> You're sick. But, uh, okay, Zakura, you have a problem. Everything is potions with you. If someone is having a doubt, you give them a potion. If someone's feeling lost, you give them a potion. If someone really just needs a hug, you give them a potion instead. <laughs> I mean, there are problems in life that can't be solved with potions. If anything, I feel like there's probably some marijuana in some of those potions. It wasn't for me, I swear. <laughs> I don't know about this, Tortera. What are you growing on your back? I, you know what? I sometimes think that myself, but I swear I haven't been hanging around Zakora. I, I've seen you h- hanging out underneath a UV lamp more than a few times. <laughs> what? It's nice and toasty. Get a nice tan on my back. But it'll melt the chocolate chips. That's why I put them away from the lamp and not on my back. <laughs> Unless you, someone's having a picnic in my back and I don't feel that. <laughs> oh, boys. But anyway, Ed, I do also love that while, fl- while Angel and Fluttershy's body can understand Fluttershy and Angel's body, the stare is still exclusive to Fluttershy. <laughs> she, it is part of her soul or or spirit. I have no idea, but she is so powerful as a result. <laughs> but also, just the look on Fluttershy's face when Angel goes to confront uh, the wolf. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Sandro the wolf. Yeah. And you know what? You mentioned before in what uh, trivial per- problems was it called? Tri- trivial pursuit. The, the episode. Yeah. Trivial pursuit was it? Uh, what well, what happened in that episode? Yeah, you, you mentioned before that the animators went nuts with the expressions and whatnot. Oh yes. And yeah, we have that here too. And yeah, Fluttershy's face here is just. <laughs> Spooky and scary, especially when uh, uh, Angel is just trying to talk to the baby and stuff. Like, oh goodness me! Spooky, scary, flutter shies and shivers down your spine. Oh yeah. But silver, red, the the topic here, the the flutter shy wants to wear Discord. What? Well, duh. I mean, every everybody seems to be pushing it. Angel just got ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah, I, I am on the same boat too, and I was like, "Wait, what? 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 Are you really?" When I first heard it, I, I had to like stop and like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! Did I, did I hear that right?" And then hit the wind button and be like, "Oh my god! Yeah, they actually said that. They put that in this episode." Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so I mean. Everyone's knowing that, but then, of course, Fluttershy probably had to do a lot of damage control afterwards. <laughs> We're just friends. We're not. Go- I'm not getting married anytime soon. My role in the final episode is is up for debate. <laughs> oh my goodness! Why why am I having this short thing in my head where there's two things that are going on to the fandom or going in the fandom, where uh, the that the court shippers are going, yes, 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 while the Flutter court haters are saying, no, oh god, no, no. Honestly, I don't know of any Flutter court haters. Oh, there's some. Of them. I know of, ri- I know of rival ships to be sure, but that's a part of any fan. Oh, true that. <laughs> but yeah, if they if they actually go, no, god, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, just like how so many ships have been sunk with uh, Big Mac and Sugar Bell. Was that official? I mean, soon. Yeah, when we get when we talk about it. <laughs> when we talk about that. Ah, it's up here. Anyway. Uh, ah, bye, bye, what, bye, what, bye, what do you think, man? Well, I do like how uh, when, when they switch bodies, Fluttershy, uh, I should say Angel now, uh, has more of a, a bit of a raspy voice. And like, you can tell, yeah, okay, it's definitely Angel. But... 
the thing that kind of bugs me is that once uh, Angel is in Fluttershy's body, body he, could, he could speak, he's just creeping everyone out. Even goes right up to a baby and makes the baby cry. It's like, Angel, what's wrong with you? You made a baby cry. It went right into its personal bubble. It's like, why? You made a baby cry. <laughs> Listen here, Sonny. I ate a baby. <laughs> the other other white meat. And then the baby cried. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, kids. <laughs> Get in oh my, my belly. God. Chili's baby <laughs> back ribs. Okay, there, fat. Oh, wait, no, I don't know if I can say that last word. Well, I, I'm pretty sure Sweet Bot will take it, but okay, there, fat. That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> you right there, Norman? Yeah. It's been a while since I watched Austin Powers. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I saw that. I miss Mike Myers. Yeah, he's still around. He's still around, but he—I he, can't recall the last time he was in like a really big comedy. You know, uh, last. Yeah, you don't really hear much of him nowadays. I don't know. He's Canadian. <laughs> well, that should mean he—he he should apologize a lot. <laughs> well, he is like in his what fifties? Probably. Last I really saw him was on a uh, John Oliver show, and I've managed to derail the conversation with Fat Bastard. <laughs> Oh, actually, wasn't he in um, Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, he did mention it, Silva. Oh, yeah, he was the the proxy for pretty much the entire music industry. Yeah. But still, <laughs> Chinese baby back ribs. <laughs> hey, anyhow. Barricade sauce. I'm carry on. So, no yes. reasons. <laughs> well, sp- well, speaking of getting in the belly, I'd also... I'm, I'm glad Fluttershy stopped Angel from doing more things with uh, her body because Angel was literally going to walk up to another pony and steal their carrots inside of the bag. It's like, Angel, what is wrong with you? And then other than that, I mean, not really much to say except the whole marrying Discord, which we talked about, and then that different kind of stare. You got Fluttershy's stare, and then you got Angel's stare in Fluttershy's body. <laughs> you know, that stare reminds me of pony life. What just just making you like? What is this? <laughs> what is going on? I, I guess I question everything in existence now. You know what? I I'm not going to judge until I see see it, and I seen Thundercat roars. Let's okay. carry on. <laughs> carry on, my uh, way. You, you want to say something about it, Silver? I, I I know you watch it. There'll be chocolate chips when you are done. <laughs> We'll talk about. I think Thundercats Roar deserves its own discussion uh, in, in another podcast. All right, all right. Hey, I don't know if I'd be a part of that because I never watched Thundercats. Oh, I'll tell you this: I watch five minutes of it until they land on Earth. Yeah, that's my threshold. That's what five minutes your tra- in. Your your trash hole. <laughs> No, but I, I don't think that you know what you're saying. Well, what's the word? Threshold? Threshold? There is the word. I don't, I, I don't know what to say to this. I don't know what you're trying to say. It's... Therefore, I cannot help you. A garbage dump? Threshold. Oh, man. Uh, let... A disposal? Let give... <laughs> there, that's the word. A garbage disposal? I don't know. It's... Garbage? Th- I do not understand. You are confusing me. Threshold? Yes, I guess. Is that how you say it? Oh, threshold. Yeah. The limit. Yes. The limit. The boundary of your endurance. Yes. Uh. Okay. <laughs> I am i don't want to hear anything about your trash hole. <laughs> I got no idea how to say it. That's for prostate exam. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I literally thought he was saying trash hole. <laughs> Uh, eh, sorry, no. I'm I'm sorry. Anyway, let's carry on. Oh God, I see. Yes, let's let's never let's never speak of this again. <laughs> you and your trash hole. <laughs> uh, you're sick, Norman. You're sick. You're so sick. Oh God. Anywho, we continue on, and we see Twilight I Sparkle think. and Spike. Yay! They have their quota here. Woohoo! Yes, obligatory appearance. <laughs> Yay. So, they mentioned about going to the market, having, well, Spike wanting to go to that store that sells gem or cookie, whatever it is. Oh, what is it? Uh, t- gem tart, something like that. So, yeah, he's very excited for it. 
and comes across Fluttershy in Angel Bunny's body. And Fluttershy talks to Twilight. Yeah, they couldn't understand her and Twilight just says to Fluttershy that if I see Fluttershy, I'll let her know that you're looking for her. This is just getting very confusing. <laughs> so, anywho, um, we go back to Angel and Angel here is not doing a good job because she... Oh, this, he is just doing things willy-nilly and just getting things or putting checks on the checklist because she, she he done them uh, like trying to feed the wolf carrots and for force feeding the wolf uh, looking at the elephant and not really giving good care and giving the giraffe a smack on the neck that's not what he wants and yeah feeding the gecko stuff while they want to put him on a diet and yeah let's just say that chaos ensues after Angel Bunny makes a deal with the snake to get his jar of cookies and it seems that Antoine might be having who now? Emily? Muriel, Muriel for dinner yes yes. so Father Shy uh, tries to trek through the forest to go to Zakura and stumble upon an eagle oh and well she survives and once she meets up with Zakura she tries to explain the whole thing to Zakura and Zakura says I don't understand you but I'm sure you and Fluttershy could patch things up and once you guys say you're both sorry understand each other you guys go go back to normal okay I'm gonna continue on picking mushrooms you can go back to your town by yourself have fun you troll! Troll! Trolly Trollenberg of Trollington! She totally knows. You know. Yeah, go go brave the dangers on your way back to town. I'll just be here picking mushrooms! <laughs> I'm gonna continue on. Um, Angel tries to break into the shed, and uh, Dr. Fauna just says, uh, Have you seen Muriel, the baby elephant? And Father just says, uh, <laughs> Angel just says, yeah, she's with Antoine having lunch. It's on the list. And after the correction, we see that Antoine ate Muriel and chaos ensues because there's a reason for everything that Father Shai did because the flamingo seems to hurt its foot like a soccer player trying to get a foul. <laughs> uh, and the giraffe hurts his neck, the gecko spits fire, and everything is in chaos. I'm going to pause here. Silver? Or did I went to last? I think I I think I was last last time. Uh, I don't exactly remember. We've been going so long. Oh, yeah. Yes, I was too. Bu- we were too busy worrying about your your trash hole. And <laughs> okay, how do you say that word, Silva? Thresh, thresh, thresh. No, uh, thresh, thresh. Uh, how to- th is hard to emphasize. It's uh, just just go thresh hole. Threshold. Threshold. There you go. Threshold. Okay. I'll try and use it. Yeah, close when enough. I can. <laughs> if not, I'll just stop using it. Well, no, I just, I understand. Our, our, it's a strange word, and th has always been a bit of a bother. Okay, I think, yeah, bother. I think I went with bother. I say. Oh, so, bother. Um, Tara, what do you think? All right. Well, I mean, they could have got. For any other pony, for um, Fluttershy and Angel's body to interact with, because having Twilight and Spike, you know, saying they're going to go to some gem feast or something like that for Spike, and then just show that, oh yeah, we can understand you, sorry about that. They could have easily got two other ponies that are, like, you know, just traveling through Ponyville, and then Fluttershy start making their way through the Everfree Forest. 
We cut to Angel literally tying up Sandra the wolf to a tree, forcing it to eat carrots. Like, that's just cruel. And, you know, just I get, wouldn't say it's a montage, but just basically Angel being a jerk. Like, the elephant sucks up the keys with the nose, pu literally punches the giraffe's neck, even though it's already sore. And then just allows the snake to eat the elephant. You know, just Angel being a jerk in general, while Fluttershy is trying to stay alive as a little bunny. And then, you know, Zakora, you think she'd be very helpful in guiding Angel back, because it's like, oh, you know, the Everfree Forest is very dangerous for a little bunny. But it's okay, if you can make it here by yourself, you can make it back just fine, right? I didn't hear the eagle almost get you. <laughs> yeah, and then as for everything else, later on, you see that the chaos ensues, where the, uh, I forget the elephant's name. Muriel. Muriel. Yeah, it's at Muriel, where it's uh, inside... And Antoine's belly, and it's basically chaos in general, but it's not Discord's doing. It's basically Angel. I mean, if anything, Angel could start working for Discord, because all the animals are just in pain, and upset, and suffering. <laughs> and Silva, what about you? Well, like I say, Zakora's a troll. She knows what's what, and yeah, she's just letting Fluttershy go into the amazing peril. Although, Angel let her do likewise, so everyone's being mean to Fluttershy. And therefore, I will destroy them all. <laughs> Death and doom and destruction are coming in the form of Silver Quill. Eh. <laughs> but uh, this does this episode does highlight one thing that is never really addressed. Fluttershy needs helpers. This sanctuary is too big, too uh, populous, and most of all, the the level of care needed is way beyond what one person or pony can supply. She's trying to do way too much. And she never acknowledges that. She never says, oh, I've realized that this all this is happening because I'm trying to do it all by myself. I'm pulling an Applejack. And off of the distance, she's like, that's my sticks. <laughs> Get your own. <laughs> so Angel, his multiple failings in trying to care for the other animals. Sure, the bullying is well, classic Angel, unfortunately. But this really does drive home she needs help. Hers. She needs helpers. Not Discord. But, uh, I mean, other than that, it's just watching Angel make things worse. He it triggers the doom flag more than a few times. <laughs> I do appreciate that Dr. Fauna fulfills a role that I feel like the background pony should do more often. Or the town residents. Just saying, what is going on? Why are you acting like this? This is weird. Stop it. <laughs> How often... Would the main six uh, benefit from someone saying that to them? Stop doing what you're doing. You're doing it wrong. Stop being weird. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that sounds, that's, you know what? That sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, you rarely see something like that happen. <laughs> like, stop being weird. While they grab Man. him by the shoulder and shake him really, really hard. <laughs> yes, yes, shake the crazy out of them. <laughs> The darkness, Murphy. Darkness. <laughs> Demon be gone. Slap. <laughs> I seen that clip, Silver, and oh my goodness. That was, ugh. Yeah, that clip was, uh, what, Charlie Murphy was it? <laughs> it's darkness, you black heat pill. <laughs> Evil, black magic. Oh, so, uh, Evil. <laughs> oh, there's nothing else. Oh my god, memories. Anyway, <clears throat> carrying on. Um, so, Fluttershy hops to the sanctuary and Dr. Fauna noticed and Fluttershy asks, what's going on? What's happened to Fluttershy? Oh, me, Angel. And Dr. Fauna says, oh, uh, the poor deer is exhausted. Fluttershy, go to the shed and get the carrot extract ASAP. And Angel discovers there's a problem. He gathers all the creatures around and tell them they're sorry and he has to um, get the animals working together and the animals kind of work together because for Fluttershy's sake so they develop a really crazy plan and it works yay so they get the key they go to the shed and get the extracts and Dr. Fauna feeds the Extract to Angel Bunny or Fluttershy in this case. And once 
they talk it out and apologize. And I like the scene where Dr. Fauna just steps away slowly. And, well, they swap bodies back. Dr. Fauna is confused. And with that, I'm going to pause here because the ending is kind of awesome. So, yay. Uh, Silva, what do you think? Well, first off, I, f- I find it remarkable we've gone this far without quoting, Stay out of my shed. <laughs> <laughs> totally. We somehow did it. I don't know how we did it, but we done did it. Well, you finally went out. Well, hey, you couldn't. we couldn't let it go completely unquoted. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, man. You you see, Fluttershy did that line officially. Well, not really officially, but at a con. I did not. Uh-huh. No, I didn't know that. Uh, it, it, it was a really old one. Uh, it was animated, too. Good for her, I I think. Well, it was maybe somebody I, asked her if she could say "stay out of my shed," and she did it. <laughs> I will have to Google this post haste, <laughs> or or it's, it truly it must be on YouTube. Yes, I hope oh, yeah, it so. Has to be. But anywho, Silva, carry on. But anywho, okay, so it's shed. Okay, Fluttershy shows up half dead. It's like, well, Zakura, I'm blaming you. I'm blaming you for this whole thing. I'm very cross at you right now. Uh, you, prob- you probably need a potion to calm me down, don't you? Because that's what you always do. It's always the potions right here. <laughs> but, uh, okay, who do you think has the greater trauma in this case? Muriel or Antoine? Oh, my God. Antoine g- gets th- gets p- pincered by a tree to cough up Muriel, who is thrown from darkness only to be scared into coughing up the keys. Oh, boy. So, man, they always say going down is easy, but going back up is not. So, I'm going to say Antoine. I'm going to say Muriel. Yeah, I think people who said that were never themselves regurgitated. (laughs) But either way, it's been a bad day for both of them. I'm having a bad day, says Muriel. And it's dark in there and I need a towel. (laughs) But... I do love that all the animals will rally for Fluttershy. Angel is never going to win their loyalty, but he knows that and he acknowledges, look, you don't have to do it for me. Do it for the Flutters. And everyone's like, for the Flutters. It's it's like, uh, it's a wonderful life. Fluttershy needs help? Or maybe it's the Simpsons in the left emporium. (laughs) Homer Simpson's calling. Now forget him. Ned Flanders needs help. Ned Flanders needs help? (laughs) So... I do like seeing the animals come together for Fluttershy. It's a tribute to her character and the impact. And Angel doing the happy uh, Peanuts yeah. dance. Yeah. Is fun. As a side note, Peanuts and Cookies is fine. Uh, some people can't have Peanuts, man. Well, for me, it's fine. I'm sorry for the other people, but I'm okay with Peanuts. I'm sure there are people who are allergic to chocolate, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Could you just imagine being able to eat chocolate and nuts, then suddenly... Having an allergy to both of them, like how bad could that be? Like that sucks a lot. Well, I hopefully we will never find out. I'm not tempting the fates. So anywho, and it's good to see Fluttershy back together. And you know we're about to get the touching resolution. <laughs> Plus seeing them happy. Yay. Also, essence of carrot juice is apparently like super spinach for them. Da 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 da. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, Tara, what were you? Well, I actually like, too, how the animals are working together, both predators and prey. They're not singing Kumbaya, though, so, you know. But I do I do like, though, how Angel's, Angel admits that, yes, I am not Fluttershy, I am Angel. But don't do it for me, do it for her, even though I'm in her body. But still, do it for Fluttershy. And they're like, yeah, she's very kind to us, you're not. But I do like that how they work together. And then the whole carrot juice, I mean, I don't know how it's a miracle drink, but somehow it uh, brings Fluttershy back to health. And, you know, we get the usual results that we see in body swap movies or episodes where they're like, I'm so sorry about this. I'm so sorry about this. And then they make up and everything's back to normal. They swap back. Yay. <laughs> All right, then. And I'm going to continue on because it's near the end. So, Fluttershy here speaks up about stuff. At first, I was like, wait, are they body swap again? But oh, no, oh, no. Uh, Fluttershy is just translating for Angel, which is kind of confusing here because wouldn't the animals understand each other? Uh, Or could this be for our own benefit? Well, if you've seen the latest Dr. Doolittle movie, 
Which I'd have to ask why. Wait, you've seen it? No, but I've watched a, a meeting pitch for it. Oh. Over on Screen Rant. Oh, okay. Huh. Uh, apparently, a premise in there is that animals, you anyone can learn an animal's language. Okay. All right, then. So, they just took away what makes Dr. Doolittle Dr. Doolittle. That's a smart move in your movie. But you haven't seen it yet? Because if you haven't, like, maybe, I don't know. Uh, you know. It's a movie in January. That alone carries a stigma. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. You know, I might go watch it. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, yeah. Have your have your raisin cookies while you're watching Doctor Too Little. You <laughs> crazy man! I'm talking to crazy. Uh, okay, anywho, I'm gonna continue on. So, anywho, um, Please do. Shy just says that Angel Hill wants to work on the sanctuary and help Angel out, and everybody is happy. So, we move to the other characters, which is Zakura and Doctor Fauna, and Doctor Fauna says to Zakura. Your gecko is not a gecko, but a fire lizard. <laughs> uh, and she says that uh, I get those two confused until they breathe fire. <laughs> uh, and she tells Zakura, and one more thing, Zakura, don't pull that crap again. Like, seriously, that is just dangerous, you mad pony, you. And she just winks to the camera. <laughs> and the episode ends. So, anywho, with that. Tara, what do you think of said episode and final thoughts? Well, I really liked this episode from the beginning to end. Like, there were the little moments where Angel's being a jerk and it's the usual stuff that we've seen in the past, but we also see later on that he he sees that Fluttershy is very busy and he accepts that she can't always be there for him, which I'm, I'm glad that he offers to help out around the sanctuary now because even though Fluttershy has uh, Dr. Fauna with her, you obviously still need more help. I mean, these are a lot of animals to care for. I mean, if you've seen zoos and stuff like that, you got people all over the places. I mean, even though it's a sanctuary, you still got a lot of animals to take care of. I like how it ended on, on the topic, and it's the usual body swap episode where one person thinks, he's like, you don't know how I feel. No, I don't know how you feel. And then body swap, you know, the usual stuff. All right. All right. Uh, it's about it. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. All right. And Silva, what about you? Well, uh, Zakura, you have not earned that wink at the audience. It's, it's, you troll. You're trolling. <laughs> they see me trolling. They hating. Trying to catch my potions dirty. Trying to catch my potions dirty. Anyway, I enjoyed this episode. I really do think that Angel learned a lesson more than Fluttershy. And part of that is that we still don't have Fluttershy acknowledging she needs extra helpers on this. It's great if Angel wants to be an assistant but he is a tiny little bunny trying to help care for much larger animals. That's going to wear him out fast. I really wish they could bring in some extra caretakers like Tree Hugger. Or if we go for the comics, the return of flax, grass, and wheat seed. Oh, they're good. That would be hilarious. <laughs> but I just, I, this, that's the one hanging, lingering question. Fluttershy needs more help. And she's not going to get the assistance. That is wrong in my eyes. It's wrong. But all in all, getting to see Angel mature and learn to be a little bit more empathic, that's a positive, and that's something I enjoyed seeing. So I will spare him my rage just this once. All right. Dude. Just this all right, once. Then. And as for me, I like this episode. This episode is a lot of fun from beginning to end. We get to see how overworked Fluttershy is. And Master of Leg always bring this up because uh, he always points out how Fluttershy is stupid busy from the school and taking care of the animals. Where does she find free time? And the sanctuary is something old, right? Season 7, was it? Yeah, season 7. So, yeah, in, yes. in between, where does she find the time to go on adventures or so on? Because there's no time with her schedule. That's what he points out, and I do find it strange too but at the same time here too the schedule is based on the guests at the sanctuary so if there's no guests she'll be free agree if there's no guests well then the sanctuary serves no purpose if there's no one there yeah, but you, know, you, you can't have a full house every day sure you can just offer chocolate chip cookies <laughs> <laughs> yeah just don't put raisins in them norman you know yeah. what i'm going to send you chocolate chip raisin cookies 
Oh, he bipartisan villain. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. To me, the episode was okay. I, I do like the episode more itself where Angel and Fluttershy gets to understand one another. And this is similar to... <laughs> let's just say the concept is not an original one. Uh, there's a movie based on it called Freaky Friday. There's two of those movies. The original and the remake. And then certain episode does this. I think what? Kim Possible did it before? I think so. Not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember it that much. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did it before with uh, Kim and Ron solving bodies. And they did the voice thing. Like I said, that's stupid. Yeah. So there's there. And also Justice League Unlimited where Flash and Lex Luthor swap bodies. Remember that one? That was a fun one. Oh, that had one of the funniest moments. Yeah. The reveal. Okay, let me see who you are. Open mask. I got no idea who you are. <laughs> oh, boy. But the episode itself is okay. And it serves a purpose somehow. And you know what? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I like it. I, I would recommend. And the moment for me for this episode is Fluttershy wants to marry Discord. What does she do in private? <laughs> Well, she has tea with Discord. Yeah, but the Mary part, like, man, I, I, you know what? I'm going to hold my thoughts on that one because those are after dark episodes. <laughs> so, hey, the Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? We're going to continue the debate of raisins versus chocolate chips. No, we're not. Oh, well, then I guess we'll talk about the third issue of Nightmare Nights. Uh-huh. So, it's yes. good times. So, yes, next week we are going to talk about Nightmare Nights. The third issue, it is getting there. It's getting there. It's getting really, really exciting. Yeah, I can't wait for it. So, anywho, that will be next week's thing. So, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thefreeshow.gmail.com. Uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at Indian Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. So, where will you can the good people find you? You can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on Patreon and Ko-fi, uh, where you can support my videos which and comics and other creative works, which would be very much appreciated. And if you go to YouTube and do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, have you mentioned EQD? Uh, yes, you can also catch me on Wednesdays on Equestria Daily, posting either comic reviews or editorials. Uh, yes, go, go, go catch them. Those are fun. Those are fun to read. And you're on Parody, all right? Par- my own so parody? I mean, you're, you're on track with the comics. Yeah, I well, I'm up to di- I'm up to date with them. Ah, all right, then. So, yeah, for a minute, I was like, I, is, is parody a new website? No, no, no. I mean, uh, on parody means you're not parody as in what Weird L does, the other word that sounds the same, English. Anywho, Tara, where can good people find you? Well, the good people can easily find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324, or they could just do a simple Google search, and I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Although, there won't be any trash holes, so they don't have to worry about that. Uh, you slip at once. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, also, please subscribe to Radio on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, my stuff like, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Quill, still in Torterra's body. What the hey? And I am Tortero, still in Silver Cool's body. What the hey as well. And we'll guys catch you next week with a less confusing episode of the MBS show. No promises. Yeah. I got nothing. <laughs> I right, see you then. Bye. Chocolate chips. No raisins. I am going to find out how long cookies last. If they can withstand me travel to the states I am going to get them I just want to know how long I'll be in Silver's body for oh oh, 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 oh. not like that <laughs>